Abigail Wilkes was deliriously happy. All eyes were on her as she entered and looked eagerly around the ballroom. She was easily the sensation of the event. Everyone could see how beautiful she was, how graceful and supple, how elegantly she floated across the floor. She continued to scan the crowd of revelers. There were many varied costumes. Devils, saints, demons, idiotic faces, cavemen. But she couldn't find Donald among the huge mob of colorfully masked and costumed figures that crowded the dance floor. She herself had selected the costume her fiancé was to wear at tonight's masquerade ball. But as far as she could see, no one present was masquerading as death which meant that Donald must not have arrived yet. Gliding across the ballroom, Abigail smiled to herself as she recalled how Donald had protested at wearing the skull-like rubber face mask, the skeleton-like rubber gloves, and the loose, flapping black robe. They had had a laughing argument in the costume shop, but Donald had given in when Abigail said she wanted him to wear it so that none of the other girls at the ball would be brave enough to dance with him, so that she could have him all to herself. As for her costume... She had shopped for four hours in order to find the perfect costume. In an insane rush, she had visited one store after another, trying on costume after costume, until finally she had found exactly what she wanted. And what a stroke of luck it was to find the perfect costume. She had chosen to go as Joan of Arc. It would be the best, most unique costume at the ball, she had decided with a toss of her shiny brown locks as she rushed toward the checkout counter. Nervous and impatient, Abigail glanced about the room. The first dance was starting already, and she still could not find Donald. He was late again, <laughs> as usual. She wondered what the hell was keeping him, as she frowned and shook her head. Pardon me, dear damsel, a man dressed in the costume of a Roman legionnaire said as he stole up behind her and tapped her on the shoulder. Are you not the maid of Lorraine, Joan of Arc? I know we are some fifteen centuries apart, but would you do me the honor of dancing with someone fifteen hundred years older than you? I'm sorry, but I'm waiting for death. Abigail smiled teasingly. The look of utter shock on the legionnaire's widening eyes amused Abigail. As he began to back away from her in horror, she noticed that he was looking over her shoulder, presumably at someone behind her. She whirled around curiously. Oh, there he is. Abigail gasped at the sight of the grinning death's head staring at her from under the black cowl, forgetting for a moment that it was only Donald. Once she remembered, she laughed nervously. You startled me for a moment, darling. I had no idea the costume would be so... so realistic. I, I didn't think you'd be entirely covered by it, or that you'd look so... so frightening. And where on earth did you get that horrible-looking scythe? Death is never seen without a sigh, he bellowed deeply. Abigail smiled at the deep, hollow tones coming from behind the mask. I see you're living up to the part, darling. But make sure you use that spooky voice on the other girls at the ball as well as on me. But now, let's dance. Oh, wait, we can't dance with that silly old scythe hanging from your shoulder. You're right, Death said. We should dance out on the terrace. Abigail laughed merrily as she put her arms around him and let him lead her toward the French doors which led to the garden terrace. Oh, Donald, I love your sense of humour. No one else I know would even think of making his voice huskier so that he could act out the part of death better. I swear you should have been an actor. Stop calling me Donald. As long as the masquerade party is on, we must live up to our parts, death demanded as he pushed the French doors open. Abigail obediently followed death as he led the way through the French doors. There, alone in the fragrant darkness that enveloped them among glittering stars that shone brightly down, they paused silently, breathing in the quiet, gentle fragrance of the fall night. A pale rind of moon waned low on the horizon, ghost-like and delicate from behind a passing cloud, and death slung the sigh from his shoulder, taking it in his right hand. Abigail's silver laughter tinkled out into the soft night air of the secluded terrace. No wonder you were late. Oh, how you must have practiced. She smiled in amusement. You know, you haven't kissed me yet, darling. She looked at him with a seductive glance. If you're afraid I'll be repelled, forget it. I know it's you underneath that mask. She batted her green eyes gently and sighed, tilting her face skyward, caught up in the moment of how romantic it all seemed to her. Death took a step toward her, 
the scythe still in his right hand, as he placed his left hand behind her waist and drew her close. She kissed him, but her lips touched him for only a second before she broke away in mortal terror with a long, drawn-out, screeching wail. But that's no mask. Abigail gasped, her eyes widening in horrific disbelief as she began to back away slowly. Your, your face is a skull, and, and that means you, you must really be... The sigh descended swiftly, cutting her off before she could finish. The End <laughs>